members uh, colloquium today. Uh, we're very happy to have uh, Pham Tiep who will speak to, to us on uh, character bounds for finite simple groups. And there is his screen showing. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I let me try to the air server that Nick told me to get. Oh, it works. So thank you very much, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So. Uh, Thank you very much for the uh, introduction and for the invitation to speak. And I also want to thank the Institute for uh, providing the support for my membership during the year. So I'd like to talk about the um, character bound for find a simple group. Um, so, uh, so like Mark said, this is gonna be about some finite group. So G is gonna be a finite group. And Suppose that you have a representation, say phi from G into GL and C. So complex representation, and you have to assume that it's faithful and irreducible. Okay. So then you can consider the, the character chi of the representation. So it's a map from G to C and chi of any element, it's just a trace of the matrix phi of G. Now, obviously, you can show that chi of G, the absolute value of chi of G is going to be bounded by the degree chi of one. So um, the entire talk is going to be about uh, how much better can you do than this obvious bound? Okay. Um, so more specifically, uh, let me discuss the problem that you want to talk about. So problem. So G is going to be a simple group, in quote. Simple group. And G is going to be an element in the group, but it's not in the center. OK. So problem A, we'd like to find a constant, say gamma, depending on G between 0 and 1. Um, and you want to find gamma as small as possible and as explicit as possible, so that for on the for on the chi, I use the notation e of g to indi uh, to indicate the set of uh, complex zeros and characters of g, and maybe you have the condition that chi of one is larger than one. You want that chi of g over chi of one. So this is the character ratio, and you want to bound it by that constant gamma. So this is an exponential version of this. So now you want to find, again, an explicit and as small as possible constant, say alpha, depending on this three, such that chi of three, it can be bounded by chi of one to the alpha three power. Okay. And this is for on the chi in this set. Uh, now, you see that I put the simple in quote because uh, G really mean like uh, almost quasi simple. You mean that the quotient of G by the, by the center is, uh, is squeezed between S and out of S for some simple group S. But uh, uh, for the purpose of the talk, I'm going to say this simple and if you like, you can take, uh, you can take your G to be something like uh, maybe the symmetric group or the uh, general linear group if you like. Or you can take the symplectic group, or you can take the EA of Q over the final theme if you like. Okay. Of course, the question is why do you want to spend time on this problem? So, why? And the reason is well, it's going to be useful in a number of applications. So, it's for the application. And of course, it's also of interest for the representation theory of finite group. Now, you can see that most of these applications will uh, use the following lemma, which is due to Frobenius. Frobenius lemma. So, you have a group G and you fix an element G. Now, if you want to count the number of ways that you can write your 
G like commutator. So I count the number of pairs X comma Y in your G plus G, such that your G is the commutator of X is Y. So X, Y, X inverse, Y inverse. Then this is just the order of G times the sum of chi of G over chi of one. Okay. Um, you can also try to, to fix to conjugate class, conjugate classes. So let's say A, which is the class of the written A, and B, the class of the element written B. And then if you want to count the number of ways to write your G, like X times Y, so the product of two conjugate from these two classes, then you can see that this can be the size of your A times the size of your B divided by the size of G times the sum over on the chi, the sum over on the evolution characters. So chi of A, chi of B, chi of G inverse divided by chi of one. Okay. So let me let me mention a few applications um, uh, along this line. So maybe the first application is going to be an, a group theoretic one. Um, so let me mention the conjecture. Uh, so I guess be, the equations you want to solve over G with above <clears throat> must be conjugacy class invariant for this. If you just want to use chi's, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. So this is going to be a class function. Yeah. So here's a here's a conjecture uh, due to Ore from 1951. We say that um, um, if G is simple, find a simple, truly simple, and non abelian, then every then every G in your G is a commutator. Okay. Uh, this is a related conjecture, which is due to John Thompson. We say that, uh, again, if your G is simple, then there is a conjugate class, say S, of some element S in G, such that your G is S times S, like I said. Now one can show right away that Thompson conjecture implies the Ori conjecture. And we know that the Ori conjecture is now a theorem. So uh, Ori is, is, a, is a theorem, uh, is a, a loss theorem. So L for Liebeck, O'Brien, Charlotte, and myself. Um, and I'm, I'll say something about the Thompson conjecture at the end of my talk. But uh, so how how do you so how does the proof go? Well, uh, I have to show that any element can be written like commutator, and have the, this counting formula, right? Okay. So basically, I have to show that this sum here is um, non-zero. And in this sum, you have the uh, dominating term, which is the one coming from the principal character. So probably you want to show that. So we need to show that, oh, sorry. The sum of chi of G over chi of one, where you look at all the characters, which are not the principal one, and have to show this small, like less than one. So if you knew that each of these character ratio was small, so that such small that uh, the sum of all of them is less than one, then then you are done, right? So let me so so let me say. So what do you know about this uh, character ratio? So here's the theorem on the problem A, which is due to mainly due to David Clark, and this is an extension by by Clark and they, uh, David Clark and Kai Margaret, and also. Another extension by Bob Ramnick. Uh, okay. And myself. So it says that um, if your G is not the 
symmetrical or contained in group. Then the gamma that you talk about in problem A, well, you can take your gamma to be something like, you can take your gamma like a, something random like 0 0.98, then it be five. I think you must be disappointed because it's so close to one, right? And it's like, uh, I don't know, less, maybe 1% away from one, but as close it is to one, uh, not much better uh, you, you can do. Okay. And therefore, if you want to apply this to prove the already conjecture, well, you see that in this, in this summation with many, many terms, one term is already very close to one. So what do you do? Well, so to use the character bound to prove the already conjecture, so the uh, loss develops something like a, that you call an un unbreakable method. Unbreakable method. And I'm not following. What, what is this? You're trying to show that the sum of the non trivial characters is in absolute value less than one. That wins a game. And what's this number gamma? Oh. So the gamma is the upper bound on all of these uh, ratios. Oh, uh, of the non, that's exactly the, okay. So then you win if it's less than one. Okay. So right, gamma, right, right. Yeah, so therefore- and that's true be, even, that numbers, do you have to check small groups by, by on a computer? Uh, well, uh, okay. So, okay. So for the symmetric group, you have to do something else. And actually I excluded it, but uh, for, for the for the group of lead type, which is the main case, then uh, then oh, we we have to do something and 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 I, I so this is the the second part of my talk. Okay. And and, and talk about it. So how 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 do you how do you prove some bound like okay. this? Okay. Let, let me change that question a little bit. Suppose the group size goes to infinity one way or another. Yes. Then does this number gamma go to zero? Uh no. Uh, for instance, like uh, you can think of let let look at the uh, like the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, transposition in SN, and you look at the so if you look at the, the smallest character, then you see that the ratio is something like one minus two over n or something. Uh, okay, so there's some small parts, but this sort of beef goes to zero, right? I mean, right, right. You're winning easily when the the whole point here. This is very much like the circle method in the th in in analytic number theory to compute solutions. Yes. Right. The main term here is coming from the trivial representation. You want that to be dominant. Exactly. And, right. And, right. Uh, you win easily if that number is really big, and so that the number of solutions is in fact very large to your equation, which is the case, right? Right. Right. Yeah. In other words, you. Yeah. If you had a random model, it would sort of agree with this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Okay, and uh, yeah, so I said that uh, we developed some method to prove it because like the character bound alone doesn't do it for us. But uh, yeah, I'm going to refer to, to, the, to the paper. And also there's, a, there's an account of this work uh, uh, given by Gunther Mahler at the Burbaki seminar for, for the detail of this method. Okay, this, now- This uh, theorem, well, what is the worst case that realizes this gamma? Um, okay, so for instance, you, uh, uh, if you stay away from the symmetric group, then what you can do is you take a transvection in the symmetric group over the F, F3. Uh, or you can look at the, some transvection in the uh, GLN over the fin of two element. Uh, and uh, those, uh, what size is the symmetric group? Oh, so one is, this, uh, yeah, okay. So let me write down. So one, you can, uh, you can take the SP, um, the symbolic group over the fin of three element, or you can take like a, a SU or SLN if you like over the fin of two element. I'm sorry, are you saying that for every N you get this 0.9875? Oh, no, 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 no. There's no, I mean, so if you want to prove it, uh, well, okay, so the action one that you get is like a, maybe a, a three fourths, three quarters. But, uh, but to prove that, and you see that uh, because of my definition of the group, they also include the, the out automorphism of the group, of the simple group. And you see that uh, it's very hard to control how the, uh, the representation of your simple group extend to those uh, out automorphism. And that's why you have to, so Bob and I have to, in, in, uh, to, 
to allow something like uh, some, some extra thing to cover the action of those uh, automorphism. So, so the statement is not sharp or it is sharp? Um, this is what you can do. But I mean, if you could talk about the being sharp, then I think that uh, uh, you can find, I think that uh, maybe 0 0.9 or something would be closer to, to the truth. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Right, um, but I'd like to uh, to mention like a more elaborate use of the uh, of the uh, from his, uh, character formula and the character bound in the so-called the uh, study of the representation varieties. So loosely speaking, what we are looking at is the setup on the homomorphism from a group uh, from a discrete group gamma into a group G. Now, G could be some of this simple group. And what the gamma, I'm going to give you some example of the gamma, but you see that uh, by studying this uh, variety, then you can see that you can find, so you can, you can find the simple quotient. Of your gamma, or you can also talk about the random duration. Of your G of the simple group G. Now, what is the gamma? Well, a gamma is finally generated. So maybe one example would be like gamma is the, the whole group. So it's generated by three elements x, y, z, where the um, x squared is equal to y cube equal to z to seven is equal to one. And you see that the uh, so we know that the uh, this final quotient of of, the, of this group are the one that is uh, that is meeting the host bound for the automorphism of a Riemann surface. Okay, so this is one example. Another example would be like gamma is, is a surface group, so it's generated by two G generators. So with one relation, so we take the product of all the commutators of AI with BI, and it's going to one. And maybe you can combine them, this kind of group together to look at only the co-compact co Hookian group. And again, I'm going to skip some details, but I, I like to refer to the papers by, uh, by Liebig and Shalev from 2005. And there's a paper, there's a, Actually, two papers by by Larsen, Lubowski, and Marion from uh, 2014, and and there is a paper by Liebig, by Martin, and Anesha Lev and myself from 2010. Okay. So now uh, let me. Let me go to another application. Uh, so this is about uh, quotient singularities. Okay. Um, so suppose that uh, you have a complex space and you have a finite subgroup of the MD. Then you have to look at the quotient of B by G. And the question is, so when does, when does this admit, this quotient admit a equivalent resolution? When, when it's not permanent, it's not permanent. Now, um, so there's a, there's a criterion due to Ito and Reed. We say that this can happen only when, when your G contain junior element. Of, of course, junior means that the H is small, right? In fact, here the criterion is that the H of your G should be 
at most one. So what the what is the age? Or maybe I'm going to skip the age because it's not easy to work with the age. So so in fact, what you should do is you should work with. So instead of the age, should use a an N two version of the uh, of Kula and Larsen deviation. Now, by using this uh, version, so Bob and I will show that. So you can you can bound the H in the following way. So so the dimension is B. So you can show that the two times B minus the absolute value of the trace of your G is less than something like 9.11 times H of your G. Okay. So so therefore. If you assume that your G is simple, and uh, suppose that the V is irreducible model over G, then so let me recall that we, I mentioned that the trace of G is bounded by something like 0 0.9875 times B. So therefore, if you know that your H of G is less or equal to one, which is the case of the cave under solution or of a not permanent singularity, then you see that that implies that the dimension of your V, which is D, is less than 365. And now you can try to, once you know that you can bound the dimension, then you can try to bound it. Okay, and this is the way that uh, Bob and me, we, we determine which has BG can keep a trip in the solution. But subject to some condition on, on your, on the action of your G on V. And also we, this way you can also resolve a conjecture of, of Kulai Larsen. motivated by their study of the quotient of collateral varieties. Okay. Um, so is the set of G's some, some simple, some, no, not simple is a bad word, a, a, a finite list. What, what are the G's that can, the dimensions okay, so at most 365, what kind of G's can be used? Don't, don't list it, I'm just curious. What, yeah, so. So most of the time you see that something like a, for instance, you can have some uh, some complete reflection group acting on the natural model. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit the different example. And and like uh, yeah, so and of course this is subject to some condition on on uh, uh, you know, something like the S condition. Yeah. So yeah, but I I like I like to talk. I mean I like to skip that detail also if if you don't mind. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and maybe let me mention one more application, which is um, about a random walk. So let's consider the following uh, shuffling. So that shuffle. So let's say that uh, we pick two cards. I and J from the deck of, let's say N, which is 52 parts uh, uniformly at random and then swap them. Of course, the question is how many is sharpened like this? Uh, we need to mix, to mix the deck. Um, so, of course, more generally, you can do the following. So if you have a group, say G, with a set of J that say X, then you can look at the Cayley graph, the gamma, where the vertices are just a set of the element in G and the address 
are the pairs G comma G S, where the G is any element and S is any of the integrators. Okay. And maybe one question is, what did diameter, what the diameter of this graph gamma? And then you can do random work on this graph. Okay, so you can start from, from one, right? And then and then at each step, you pick the, so you can pick the next edge uh, uniformly at random with the, um, so let's say if G and you could pick some GS here and the uh, probability is like one over the cycle six X. Okay, so, and then you can talk about the missing time. Say T, put it random board. So what it is, so, so this is the minimum number of steps is, uh, which is needed so that you can reach an, uh, like a very close to the uniform distribution. So what you can do is you can, so you can look at the minimum of the positive number uh, into the K such that the P upper K. So the P upper K is the probability that you are at some vertex after K step and you compare it to the uh, uniform distribution. You can use the total variation norm or you can, so let's say I, I, I say to the N1, which is, which is two times the total variation norm, and you want it to be less than one over E. So, so in fact, the cash shuffling that I talked about here is the one that are uh, considered by Percy Dacones in this celebrated paper from the 1981. So Dacones and Sashahani. So honey, from 1981. So here we look at the case where your G is the SN, the symmetric group, and the set X is the set of the identity together with all the transposition. And so th they show that your T is about one half and time log N. So now, uh, how do you relate this uh, missing time to the character bound? So there is an upper bound by Daikoni and Sasahani, which say that, uh, um, so if in the case where your X, it does a set of conjugate of one element, say of some element written G, then you can show that the, the distance between P upper K to the uniform distribution in the square is bounded by um, the sum over again, we throw away the principal character because it's, it's like the uh, like the uniform distribution, and then you get the chi g to the two k divided by chi one to the two k minus two, and you have to sum over all the characters. Now you see that um, well, okay. So uh, what kind of result on character bound that you need so that you can you can bound the missing time? So this is this is another tool that you are that you're going to, to need. So this is the, uh, some kind of, uh, so the zeta function introduced by written. Zeta function. Uh, so we have a group G. So the zeta function of G in the verb and S is a sum up on the chi one to the next S power where chi is any user character of G. Now, Witten considers the case of SU2, and what you get is exactly the Riemann zeta function. And uh, this is a very useful result due to uh, Liebeck and Charlotte. You say that if your G is a, is a bleed type over FQ, and if you take your S to be something like uh, at least two divided by the coefficient number of your, of your group, then the limit when you Q tend to infinity of the zeta function is one. So again, the domain term would be the one coming from the prism character. So, so now let's assume that in the problem B that I introduced above, let's, let's, uh, let's say that we know that type G is bounded by type one to the alpha power for the time. 
Sorry, I'm not clear on what, what is the inequality on S? I, I can't read it. S is bigger than what? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Okay. It's that. Oh, so two over H and H is the coccidial number. H is the coccidial. Yeah. So for instance, if you take the uh, SLN, then that I should be N. Oh, N, of, yeah, N, right, for SLN, yeah, right. Um, so suppose that I can have this bound, uh, the exponential bound alpha here, then what I can do is I can take T to be something like a one plus one over H divided by one minus alpha. Then you can see that for this kind of, T, then PT minus U square is going to be uh, at most the zeta function at the point, I think, um, what it is. Uh, so something like 2T times 1 minus alpha minus 2. And because of the way that I choose my T, then this is going to be lesser than then um, then two over h and therefore and i shall subtract one so therefore it's going to be 10 to zero when you kill 10 to infinity so therefore it's going to be less than the one over e that you need for the missing time so so i just want to show you that uh, so if you get this uh, exponential character bound then you can get your hand on the on the missing time okay uh right so now let's try to Let's try to see what kind of result you have on the problem A and B. So resolve on problem A and B. So remember that the problem A is to bound the kata ratio, chi g over chi one. And problem B is to bound the chi g, like, uh, like some power of the chi one. So I already mentioned the uh, so the first result is the 0 0.98, 75. But uh, most of the time, we like to focus on, on Carson group. So, so you see, I'm going to say this here, uh, the classical group plus N Q. So this is classical group over the space F Q to the N. You can take the, uh, let's say GLNQ or SPNQ if you like. Okay. Um, so, uh, so this is related to the, uh, to the question of Peter. I mean, if you look at the count table of those groups, then you can see that the farther away your element is from the, from the scalar transformation, then you can see that all the character values, they become smaller and smaller. So we need some kind of measure of being far away from the central element. And this kind of a measure is the support. So I'm to say that if G is an element in the group, then the support of G. So this is the, uh, the uh, co-dimension of the larger eigen space. So let me write down. So this is, I mean, you take the infimum over all the eigenvalues, possible eigenvalues, and you take the co-dimension of the kernel of your G minus lambda. And I have to extend the scalars here. So for instance, the transversion would be the one that has the, the um, support one, or even take the like, uh, reflection of zero reflection, then the support would be one. Now, so then, yeah, you can do better than this 0 0.98, 75, if you fix your element, and here's the theorem due to uh, Larsen, Michael Larsen, Anes Shalev, and myself from 2011 or 2012, probably. So we say that um, if you bound, if you want to bound chi g over chi one, then you you can bound it by something like one over q to the square root of the support of g. Divide by, divided by 481. Of course, the 481 is not an optimum one. And, uh, and the, the other thing is that I have this square root and I don't like this square root. I want to upgrade to the first power. And we see this uh, closer to the end of the talk. 
but on the other, this is a totally explicit bound and it's turned out to be quite useful. So this is about the problem A. Now I'm to spend more time on problem B about the about getting an exponent bound for the kind of you know, values. Uh, yes. At some point, you'll say what techniques you use to give upper bounds for characters, right? Uh, yes, yes, yes. And maybe I'm uh, I'm illustrated when I get to the to the um, to the next theorem, but I'd like to uh, yeah. So let me let me mention a few results. That, uh, that are known um, before us. So remember that what you want to do here is like you want to bound chi g by chi some power alpha, right? And so let me talk about the, so the previous reason were mostly concerned with the symmetric group. And the first reason was due to Sergei Famin and Nathan Lulop from 1996. And they say that if your G has only cycle, if the permutation G has a cycle of length M, then chi of G is gonna be bounded by something like chi of one to the one over M power. But unfortunately we have some little over one here. So it's an asymptotic result if you want to have this bound. Then later on, um, this design has been realized greatly by, by again, by Larsen and Shalev from 2008 in, a, in the serious paper, and where they show that the same bound hole, if, if you put in the condition that your G has at most n to the little over one cycle of length, at most m. Okay. So now let uh, let me let me go to the uh, to the main class of the group that you want to study. So this is group of three type. So the group of three type. So by that I mean that we have to view our group G like the group of the fixed point for some Frobenius map. And the script G is going to be, well, uh, okay, is a connected deductive. Over FP bar. And uh, F. Right. And uh, let's say that the, uh, the semi simple. I want to get back. I, I want to have an intuition what you're doing. So for the symmetric group. We know what the representations are. It's the combinatorics of, um, I guess, young tableaus. So is that the, the kind of thing that goes into the proof, or is there some exponential sum that you have to estimate non-trivially at some point? Well, you see that uh, in principle, you can if you are given like a two partition, one for the for the representation, another one for your second type, then yeah. you can you have the uh, for the character formula, right? You can you, you can write down the value, but but uh, it's very hard to to estimate. Like for instance, if you just look at the very simple example, like if you look at the transposition, then uh, one thing you can try to do, maybe you want to do, uh, to use the uh, uh, Monaghan uh, Nakayama, and then you 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 go down and down, but I mean like to evaluate it is not easy to estimate. Yeah, I guess I'm easy. asking what they did. Um, um, so uh, Larsen, Michael Larsen and Anna Chalet, they, uh, they did, uh, so instead of uh, dealing with the usual degree, they use something like a, they replace it by some other um, 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 well, something that uh, close uh, behave like the degree of the representation, and uh, yeah. Okay, uh, I mean SN and Lee type are going to be different techniques. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. It's actually it's a totally different technique. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. So let's say that the same is what has rank R. Now I need one more uh, definition, which is like, uh, so if you if L is an F stable, lady subgroup, then uh, I want to define some constant, say alpha 
and upper F. So this is going to be zero if your L is a torus. And it's a it's the maximum over all the unipotent element U non-trivial in the group and F in the finite group. And what I do is I take the the quotient, the ratio between the dimension of the class of U in L divided by the class of U in G. Okay. So for instance, if your if G is like type uh, uh, SLN, then uh, this alpha is going to be bounded by something like n minus two over n minus one. But if your G is like EA, then your alpha is at most uh, 17 over 29. Okay. And here's the theorem due to Raman Metrovokanikov. Uh, Martin, Anne, and myself from 2018. So we say that there is a function f from the natural numbers to the natural numbers. And such that if your p is a good prime and if a g is any element in a g up to f, and the condition is that the centralizer of your uh, of your element G is contained in an upper F for a for a proper split levy L, then then you do have the exponential bound. Type G is going to be bounded by type one to the alpha and F power. But unfortunately, you have to put in this F of R. Okay. And I'm comment on this F and then uh, uh, and the alpha and also how do we prove it. But we have this condition that the uh, N has to be split. So this means that if it, it's a Russian, it's a levy of some Russian parabolic. Um, and so we, we spent quite some time trying to, to remove this condition. And then finally with uh, J Taylor, we succeeded. So the theorem, which is due to J Taylor and myself, 120. So we say that the same home, but well, if your n is not is not split, but we have to, but we have to assume that in this case the center of this the group G is is connected. Okay, well, so let me make some, some remarks that the F of R, the F of R is something like, a, like the order of the, well, let me put in something like, like a R factorial to the 2.5 power multiplied by some, some other thing. But, uh, but it's not very far from the truth. But secondly, this bound here, so the, the, the exponent in the bound, it's sharp if the centralizer, well, if your G is semi-simple and the centralizer of the element G, it exactly is some proper maybe subtle. Okay, so how do you prove it? So, so for the proof, so the idea is that, I mean, whenever we have this kind of condition, that instead of looking at the type G, then you can replace this by estimating the, uh, the size of the uh, Lucic restriction of the capital kind. So, so the first, we notice that the, the kind is gonna be just the, the uh, Lucic restriction of chi, but divided at the element G. And, and of course, you have to use the daring music theory. And we, and we, we use heavily the lucid notion of the unitary support 
of any character. And there is a dual notion, which is the Kavanaka notion. Of Kuifan set. So you can, so the way France said of some character is just the, you know, the support of the Andrew's uh, dual character for that character. Um, but, so again, I, I don't think that I have time to talk, but uh, the, key, the key step of the proof is that, so because we know that um, the chi of G is gonna be just a loose restriction of the chi divided at G, so, the key step of our proof is going to be to, to control the behavior of the wave and set under the lucid restriction. So, so I, I mentioned that the, the bound is sharp if your element is semi-simple. And in general, the bound is applicable if you have the condition that the centralizer of your element is containing some proper lady subgroup. But what if you don't have this condition? What if? The centralizer of your element is not contained in any, any proper lady support. For instance, if your element is inupotent. Um, so there is also like a like a, a, a second approach. So another approach which is due to um Bapuranic. And Mike and Larsen, and and myself. So instead, we we said we develop uh, the so-called the Levin theory. And the way you do it, we develop it, we rely on again we rely rely on the dealing lucid theory. Coupled with the half duality. Okay, um, so using this level theory, what you can put in the following theorem. So for, for on the epsilon, for on the epsilon between zero and one, there's some delta such that for any lead type group, if you know that the centralizer of your element is at most then the power of the order group. So if the centralizer is small compared to the order of the group, then chi of G is bounded by chi of one to the epsilon power. And so let me give you some uh, example. So let's say that if G is like SLN or S SUN, and if your epsilon is eight over nine, then you can take delta to be something like a one twelve. Now, you see, this look like the uh, the the uh, definition that you would give to our student in a canonical class. And sometimes the student, they are confused about where, where do they put the epsilon and delta. And in fact, we want to do make the same, we want to do the same thing here. So in application, what we need is we have to swap the epsilon and delta in this definition. So we have been thinking about, so how can you swap the epsilon and delta in here? And uh, I'm happy to report that now we can do it. So this is the, so this is the final part of my talk. So this is a very recent result due to Larsen, Michael Larsen, and myself, and we prove it during the last couple of months. So we prove that there is some universal is a universal. Constant. C such that for all the on the simple group of lead type and for 
four on the G and four on the chi. So no matter whether the, the cartesian is good or not, then you can prove that that chi of G in bound is by chi of one to the power one minus C times the log of the size of G of the class of G divided by this by the size of, of the group. Okay. Um, so let me uh, let me make some remarks. So first of all, um, so this exponent, well, oh, let me put it this way. Up to this, up to this constant C, the, the fraction, I mean the, the Can exponent. you give an estimate for C, I assume? Yes, I'm going to write it down. Um, unfortunately, so right now you see, I mean, I, my C, our C is very tiny. And this is because of the nature of the group. I mean, the, the, of the proof, because we have many, many iterations. So C is like something like, uh, I think it's about uh, the 10 to the minus 20. Okay, I just wanted to know that you could write it down in principle. Yes, yes, so C, so C is explicit. Okay, now I, I wanted to say that the exponent lock up, lock up the order of G of the class and divide the, the order of G so this is optimal. Okay, and now maybe we don't know, we don't want to like to have to look at the the, uh, the class of G and then compute the, the side of the uh, of the class. So I can say that uh, if your G is a class and group, then the uh, this log. Of the side of the class of G divide the log of the order of G is omega. So it's the same magnitude as of the support of G that I defined before divided by the dimension. So you can substitute the uh, this quotient for the uh, for the, uh, in this bound. Okay. Um, so let me let me uh, list some consequences of this result. Some consequences. So the first one is, so I mentioned the, the square root bound of the uh, support, uh, the result due to Lars and uh, Shalab and myself. So now we have the linear upgrade. Of NST. Namely, we can show that, so you can easily show that cap G over cap one is now bounded by one over Q to the another constant C1 times the support of G. Um, so the second consequence is that now we can prove the conjecture loop and also of Salep, which is the diameter and the mixing time for any random work on, on group of type. So if you look at the uh, the t of the missing time when you do the random work on any class of g, so g is a group of lead type, and if you look, then this is the, the same as so let me put it this way the same as the diameter of the uh, of the graph and and this is the same, it is the same as the log of, so S is the, is the class. So this, this equality was proved by Lebeck and Salat uh, in a paper in the annual. And, but then the main thing is to prove that the, this, this the, uh, the missing time is the same as- I think your logs are upside down. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Right. And uh, 
uh, another consequence. So using this bound, you can also prove another conjecture, which is due to uh, Martin Liebeck, Anne Chalet, and myself, a conjecture about the um, about the diameter of Mackay graph. And I don't have time to talk about it, but this is kind of like the dual version of the Haley graph. And also, you can, and using this, you can also determine the uh, conversion rate to the uh, stationary distribution, which is the constant measure. And now I think I have uh, a couple more minutes. So uh, let me mention one more consequence of this. So I mentioned the Thompson conjecture. So, um, so unlike the oil conjecture, the Thompson conjecture is still open, but uh, there's a great paper by Ellis and Gardeev. Ellis and Gardeev from 1998. So they proved that this is true. If your G is over FQ and Q is not small, so Q is like at least eight. But unfortunately, since then, uh, that there's no progress on this uh, conjecture. And, uh, and of course, I will should also mention that it's true for the, uh, for the S PSNMQ. Okay, but for all the other group, then it's still open. Now, using our character bound, then you can prove the, so now we can, so we prove that, that the, the Thompson conjecture Pounds for for the symplectic group for any q um, also for the uh, the orthogonal uh, group if your q is even and for the psu and q and the the orthogonal group if your q is odd uh, subject to some condition, to some condition on N and Q. Okay, and for the for the unitary group, then you can also assume that Q is even here. But if N is large, okay, and you can make uh, this uh, being large uh, explicit. Okay, um, right. And maybe a few more consequences, but I don't think that I have time to talk about it. Um, so uh, let me just mention uh, the basic, the main idea of the proof. Idea of proof of uh, last and and t bound. So you see that. Uh, um, so I started my talk by by showing that uh, if you can prove some character bound, some good character bound, that you can. And then you can uh, put some uh, some result about mixing so uh, and some other application. But to prove the character bound in this theorem of Atlas and 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 myself, so we reverse the order of it. So now what you do is you we start with probability theory. So we are, so first you put some mixing theorem, and then using the mixing theorem, then you then you improve our character bound. Um, so that's it. Uh, so first we use uh, so so you have to do the probability. Part, and then you can return to the representation theory. Okay, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. It's a very interesting talk. May I ask a, a tip? May I, may I want to, put, to push a little bit more in the direction that Peter started? I, I mean, do you use, I, I mean, on uh, or, or some of the previous work, uh, okay, you use the classification of the representation uh, 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 for SN is by the young tableau or, by, or the classical group by uh, the Lee Lustig, whatever, but eventually, do you use, uh, uh, is it use some exponential bounds from number theory? 
And if not, maybe you can go backwards and deduce some number theoretical results because eventually uh, 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 bounding, because characters of uh, finite groups are always some kind of sums of uh, roots of unity. So there is, maybe one can milk out some number theory out of these results. You mean like to use? Uh, he used uh, the Lean's purity anyway. Okay, so uh, so maybe I have to say more about the the way that you prove it. So you see that, uh, um, so for the last result, then I said that uh, we we put some mixing theorem and we put the mixing theorem so that uh, we show that in actual, we want to show that with given any element with high probability, we can somehow reduce the problem to the situation that that uh, Bob and Bob and and uh, and Michael and I considered. And now for our result, this uh, GNT theorem here. So how do you prove this? Well, so we have to use the elusive theory in the following way. We develop the notion of the level, and then you have to relate the level of the character, the degree of the character to the lucid label of the character. And when well now, when, so the level is some kind of measure of the bigness of the character. And when I know that the character is, is small or large, then I know the, the lucid label of it. And therefore I know the neighborhood of the character and then I can work with that. And of course, I mean the, yeah. So the, of course we know that the, the, the lucid theory, yeah, is, is, uh, is being on a very, very strong, like a uh, under Underbar geometric foundation. So yeah, the wine kind of trap and so on. But uh, uh, but uh, Alex, you you mean that uh, if we if you some stronger, so you mean that if you try to use some stronger result from number theory, maybe you can strengthen our character bound. This is what you mean. Either or or it might be uh, charming if you could deduce some number theoretical results from your results that the number theorist cannot do or, or, or cannot do right away by their method. Is, is, there, is, is there anything like that? <laughs> um, so, uh, I mean, among the bound that I mentioned, there's, uh, there's my probably, well, you know, like even like, when you try to read in an elementary way and then you say that okay so for instance the, the bound of last and Chalet and myself so so we say that um so we use a lot of linear algebra but at the end if you want to look at some character of small degree then we still have to use the, the inducive theory so that we know what are those characters so for instance if you tell me that you have a some character of a as an nq of small degree then what it is and the way that the way that you know, we determine to the way that he answered the question is we have to use the, the inclusive theory and yeah but but yeah i mean uh, yeah we have to think about uh, what what you what you are suggesting and yeah you know like michael and i we just uh put this yeah. like a few weeks ago so i i, I never tried it but in principle if, if, even if you take sl2p where basically you know all the representations and you write down explicitly you know the matrices and explicitly the 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 the, eigen, the traces and the uh, and uh, and the, uh, the sum of the eigenvalues. I mean, it says something which has some maybe strange meaning, but it has some number theoretical meaning. Um. Well, uh, let me mention that if you look at the um the uh, let's say S N and Q. Let me stop the sharing. Maybe. Um, S N two. Yeah, SN2. Well, I mean, like, uh, so the, 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 the character sum that is involved in the, in the character, they are very simple. Like, you know, like it's just like, a, um, well, at the end, you just have some uh, root of beauty plus the, uh, the inverse of it. So, and then you go, uh, if you go to some SNN2, then most of the characters, they involve some, well, um, let me talk about the semi simple element, then they involve only some very simple um, exponential sum. But there are some very complicated one. Yeah, right. So Jay, Jay is saying that for the SN two Q, it's just the the Gauss sum. Yeah. But if you, but the problem that among all the characters of, of your group, there are some which are like, a, uh, which are like very well. Even maybe you cannot write it down like the sum of the uh, of the uh, 
the linguistic characters. So there are some, yeah. Uh, in the case of GL or GU, then you know that you can write every character like a linear combination of linguistic characters. And but uh, but for other type, there are some characters that that you cannot do it. And so finding an explicit formula for those character values is is not easy. And I think that in some cases it's still open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I see now that Taylor is writing, uh, which now I, I remember that once I saw it, that in SL2 you get classical Gauss sounds. So maybe SL3 will give you something uh, less classical, but still interesting. Well, I mean, like uh, you, you can look at the sum where the, you take a, a, a root ability, you raise it to any n cube power, uh, i cube power, and you run i from one to n, right? Yeah, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do you use, you say you use hard duality? Yes. Uh, yes. So this is the way that uh, that uh, uh, Bob and Michael and I developed this uh, level theory. So I, I stopped the sharing. But I can, uh, so so the way you do it, for instance, if you talk about uh, uh, GLN, uh, GLNQ, then if there is the notion of the level, 11M, so how do you classify the cut of 11M? Then you look at the 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 the, uh, the dual pair GLN cross the GLM, mm -hmm. so you make it work. I mean, you make you make it act on the space FQ to the NM. So we have two groups. So we use the GLM to control the representation of the 11 M representation of GLN. Now, of course, you want to do it for SP, then you use the orthogonal group on the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, so the main idea over there is like we we so we we want to relate the the level of the character. The way that you define it, to the to the degree of it, and to the logic label of the character, and and uh, and yeah. But when you do that, then you see that you have to accumulate like a lot of errors because from the level one to level two and so on. And the higher the level is, then then the errors they become bigger and bigger, and therefore you know like the the estimate become less and less sharp. Mm -hmm. And 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 I mentioned the the constant. C that uh, Michael and I have because like so we we've been we've been on the paper with uh, Bob and and Michael and and then it's already had some uh, well some errors no not errors in there but I mean like it, uh, like along the way and then when Michael and I did it then we have to bootstrap things in in two more steps and each step give you like you know like more and more you know like uh, errors along the way and that's why the C become so tiny. But you're happy to say that the C is in explicit. So the main thing that you've done here is to allow any element, not uh, you have a uniform bound uh, for all elements, basically, right? That's, yeah. That's the yeah. Yeah. Right, right. So, so the main thing is that we can do it for any element, for yeah. any character, yeah. and yeah. and for any characteristic. For instance, the bound uh, that uh, uh, Mr. Rukarnikov and Lee Shalev and I proved then then it works only for the, uh, for the good characteristic because if you use some uh, some result on cutter shape that yeah you know like is is it only for the good prime mm -hmm. and also uh, in general that approach doesn't work for the uh, for the non semi simple element I mean yeah I mean like for the unipotent element and and for the non uh, semi simple element where the semi simple part is uh, isolated. Yeah, one more question, if I may. Why did Thompson ask the question? What did he have in mind from uh, that S squared is everything? Um, I, I mean, Ori, I can see, because people want to know when something's a one commutator. I don't but think John yeah. remembers ever asking the question, to be honest. So. Ah. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But, but, but I think it implies. Oh, yeah, yeah. He <laughs> said it implies, yeah. But why? Uh, I mean, uh, it's an interesting equation over a group but why why specifically that one uh, i mean did he i mean usually has something in mind i would have thought yeah. maybe to imply ori i guess um yeah yeah like like bob said yeah and <laughs> i mean if you ask john he just said I, did i ever ask that i don't know <laughs> so Uh, Fam, can can I ask a question? Yeah, please. Hi. Uh, so, uh, okay. So, um, I guess uh, what you're calling the level is 
For GLN, that's the same thing as what Roger Howe calls rank. Yes, yes. Uh, 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 okay, let me. Um, so, so uh, Roger Howe and and Shamga Gurevich uh, developed some 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 rank. So the, the this is uh, the EU rank is one thing, and then this another thing. Yeah, I think that uh, uh, this another rank, and that rank is uh, is uh, yeah, it's the same as the level. Yes. Okay, okay. And uh, yeah. then there is connection um, for classical groups. There is some connection between rank and uh, theta correspondence. Is that, uh, is that? Uh, um, so the, the, yeah, right. So, uh, so the, the, the example that, that I mentioned about the, uh, so the, um, um, Okay, so in the paper GNT here, so we we uh, we show, uh, we show that there is a there is some canonical correspondence between the representation of of eleven M of GLN to the GL to the representation of GLM, and this is like. But here you you, you look at kind of the, the top of the theta correspondent. Yes, yes, and so that yeah, this yeah. is why this is what's limiting you to just being able to say things about classical groups. Oh, you mean like, uh, can you do it for the exception groups? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Um, well, for the, oh yeah, I, I didn't have time to mention that uh, there, there are also results about the character bound for the exception group of Lee type, uh, which is uh, maybe, uh, maybe I should mention the re recent paper by Martin Liebeck and myself. But you see, uh, as far as concerned with the character bound, when the, your group has a bounded rank, then uh, yeah, you have, the, you have the freedom to let Q tend to infinity and then you can bound the character values, uh, yeah, in a, an easier way. So in that sense, you don't have to develop, uh, you don't have to use the theta correspondent for the, for the- Yes, for, right. you, you, certainly, you certainly need n to go to infinity to swallow your C. Exactly, exactly, yes, yes, right, right, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. okay. Uh, may, maybe we talk at some point. Yeah. <laughs> I, have some, I have some other ideas. <laughs> I, I, maybe it's uh, time to thank the speaker again for a very interesting talk. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much for attending.